Listen, your head is just going to be the size it's going to be. Like, you're freaking out over this. <laughs> <laughs> like, look how gigantic my head is. <laughs> a lot of computing power in there. I don't want it to be Dr. D and the Eggman, you know? <laughs> Brainiac, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. How you been? Good, man. Just got back from Washington State, visiting with my business partner, and then uh, we just... Honestly, we just hung out and did edibles most of the weekend. It was and watch the Olympics. It's as good that as sounds you think beautiful. It was. Exactly. You, you didn't boycott it because of the the opening ceremony. What no. kind of a Christian are you? Oh, I don't worry goodness. about stuff like that, Simon. <laughs> Bigger things going oh, on. Oh, oh, a sane Christian. Yeah, yeah. I can't worry about how somebody <laughs> presented something and you know the Last Supper or whatever. Come on, come on. You know, uh, I, I so I text you this morning and I said I'm making a lot of enemies on YouTube and it was exactly about that. So I'm always trying to, of course, just like you, we're, we're trying to broaden our our horizons. So I want to yeah. hear voices from all kinds of things. So anyway, I am subscribed to Jewish rabbis, Orthodox Christians, uh, liberal Christian apologists, atheists, you know running the gamut and i just want to hear everybody's opinion but this uh this particular friar in the orthodoxy you know he's just you know it was it was a, a a kind kind of uh youtube video he wasn't overreacting himself necessarily but he was representing those who are overreacting over this whole scenario okay and he wasn't necessarily a voice of reason, although he wasn't a voice of like, oh, no, the world's coming to an end. You know, <clears throat> in orthodoxy, they talk a lot about demons. I don't know how familiar you are with them, but oh. at least the ones I'm acquainted with and those who represent orthodoxy on YouTube and, and other resources, you know, uh, they talk a lot about demons. Demonology is a big part of it. So anyway, they're just saying things like, if it doesn't have the spirit of Christ, then it's the spirit of a demon. And this whole like binary attitude toward everything, you know? <laughs> it's so, ridiculous. so I just asked them simple questions. <clears throat> where did Jesus say this? Please tell me where Jesus, I don't want to hear about anybody else. Yeah. Only Jesus. Where did Jesus say this? And I understand that Jesus isn't the only resource for, for Christian knowledge. But I think if it's something that important, that's what I always think. Okay, if it's that important, then why didn't, hasn't God, and, and the Bible is our, you know, access to God's word, then why isn't it in there? Yeah. <laughs> you know, why isn't being offended by art one of Jesus's talking points? <laughs> You know, it sounds ridiculous what you just said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, can you imagine Jesus walking through an art gallery and just getting pissed off? <laughs> can't stand this. Yeah, <laughs> instead of a, inappropriate. Yeah, <laughs> instead of appreciating everybody's yeah. efforts and things like that, even those who are mocking. But you know, let's pretend for a minute that all these Christians who are complaining are are one hundred percent correct mm -hmm. that what was presented was a mockery of the, the last supper and a big middle finger to Christians everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's accept that. How would Jesus react to it? Would he turn the other cheek? Would he tell us to, you know, uh, be, befriend our enemies? Would he, you know, agree with those who spitefully use us, I think is the exact phrase in the King James anyway. Or would he say, be offended and burn down the art gallery. You know, I mean, <laughs> right. it's just, it's a weird and, and, and boycott the Olympics. 99% of whom who are, who are participating in the Olympics have nothing to do with this live performance art yeah. that you're all worked up about, but you're going to boycott the entire Olympics over it. It yeah. just, it's such lunacy. It's lunacy. <laughs> and the, and so you're getting, so what you're telling me is you were talking about this on YouTube or something. Yeah. And someone yeah. didn't like it or a lot of people didn't like well, it. Well, I just commented on the video and I just, okay. you know, and, and I, you know, I try to be friendly, but, but I'm also being really direct and honest, yeah. you know, and I just say, guys, this is, you know, 
and, and and I think some of the verbiage I was using in the original in my original comment, which has now turned into, of course, you know, a back and forth yeah. between myself and like 10 other individuals. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> uh, you know, I'm trying to keep it friendly, you know, but um, but you know, my my the point I was trying to make is that each of us only has a certain amount of of uh, uh, time. We only have a certain amount of bandwidth. And so we should be concentrating on things that are much more important, you know? Right. So, so the, the outrage here is so misplaced because I'm not seeing these same people being outraged about genocide currently occurring. Yeah, of course. You know, I, you know, I don't, I don't see them, you know, taking a stand against, you know, this, that, or, but, you know, just like human suffering on a global scale, that's so much more important than a piece of live performance art that will be forgotten the moment oh. you stop complaining about it. And that was one of the <laughs> points I made on there. It's like the moment you stop complaining about this, it will be forgotten. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Think about something like the, and not even just human stuff. People don't care about animals either, uh, clearly. But like, mm. think about the wildfires in Australia that predated yeah. Uh, a lot of the pandemic and all those koalas that died. I didn't hear anybody getting upset about that in America. No. You know, like, or the you know places that were destroyed, the outback, all this stuff. I don't hear anybody talking about when Bola Saro, whatever that psycho's name was, for, he used to be the president of Brazil, was just, and may still be going, I don't know, chopping down the Amazon rainforest regularly, deforestation. Yeah. Where's the uprage? Where's the uproar about that? Oh, no, wait a minute. It's got to be about that someone did some artistic piece about The Last Supper that was a little bit different than what you thought it should be. Actually, a lot yeah. different. And uh, that's that's your hill to die on. And I was like, why, though? Like, And, you know, the uh, this is a question I asked, um, you know, my wife, who, of course, completely agrees with everything we're yeah. saying. But, you know, so we weren't debating this. We were just discussing it. And I, and I asked her, I was like, are paintings by Leonardo da Vinci canon? Right. You know, because <laughs> to me, that's a completely fictitious painting, a, rep a complete imagine, imagine, you know, a work of imagination is what I'm trying to say, uh, by da Vinci about the Last Supper. Yeah. There's nothing sacred about it. You know what I'm saying? This is not oh. <laughs> some ancient, you know, holy relic. It's a painting. It's a painting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just right, you're baffled. You're by baffled, right? Yeah, I, I, you're yeah. So sometimes like I, 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 I like can't even. I lose the ability to think sometimes when I'm confronted with such insanity. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> like it's shocking to hear it, and you're just like, why are you wasting your time on this? Like this is. But yeah. this is goes back to I'm going to link it back to a previous episode we had that there's just some level of it that it doesn't matter because you have to have a complex hardware system on some level to be able to think about this differently. I mean, it's yeah. honestly, it's just a lot of basic stuff, you know, to people. They can't get a be at, they can't get past their basic hardware system. That's not a slam. It's just reality. No. You know what I'm to that point, yeah, I'd mentioned. <clears throat> an email I had to send to a low, our, my, yeah. my church's local leadership. And we, we, we decided we'd talk about it. Um, the, the person in question who had given a talk, he's a representative of the local leadership. There's a, to, to give everybody, cause you know, the Mormon church hierarchy, right? You have a Bishop who is the leader of a congregation, a single congregation. And then you have what's called a stake presidency um, who oversees a group of congregations in a specific geographical region to help them oversee and, you know, uh, uh, teach and preach and things like that. They, the stake presidency calls um, what are um, high council people. Now, these are all men, uh, just to make sure we're painting the right sure. picture, because in the Mormon church, women have little to no voice in, in leadership, which is something that I've been, of course, you know, yeah. hammering on for 25 right. years or so. But 
anyway. Um, and then from there, that leadership goes, to, you know, there's another level of, of larger regional leadership. And then it's like the top tier leadership yeah. of the entire church, which is made up of a first presidency who there's three members of and then 12 apostles, a quorum of 12 apostles. So anyway, I'm just setting the, the picture so that we can see that the person who gave the talk here this past Sunday, while they're kind of a low level leadership position, regional leadership position, they're in, in, in steps, not that far away from the main leadership of the church. So yeah. it is really important that these people, whoever they are, are speaking in a way that represents the church as a whole. It represents the current thoughts, practices, and protocols of the church. And so that is all just to set up that what this person did this last Sunday <laughs> Lay it on really be betrayed all of those, all of those things. And I don't think they did it because they're a bad person. And I also want to make that extremely clear in my letter to this person that was also CC'd, you know, to the rest of, to the stake president, you know, who oversees our whole region. Um, I made that very clear. He seems like a very nice individual. And what happened was, is what you were just saying. He just kind of got lost in his own head. Yeah. There's an election coming up. He prefaced his, his remarks by telling us that. And of course, the moment somebody prefaces their remarks with that, you know, they're going political. There is a document in the Mormon church that's called the proclamation to the family. This came back out back in the nineties. Um, the, the main leadership of the church um, wrote it, signed off on it. And it's a really important document to Mormons. And it really defines what mainstream Mormonism believes about the family. It also talks about gender, who it talks about Mormons belief in a pre-mortal existence. And in that pre-mortal existence, we were spirit beings. Now here's where it goes off the rails. And it's, it's something I have a huge problem with in that document, the proclamation to the family, there is the claim that our spirits had gender before we were born. So the gender we're born with in this life is a continuation of the gender our spirit had previously. Just putting that out there. Does that make sense to you? No. Like, like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because let me ask you this as a medical professional, what is the purpose of gender? I'm giving you the long pause here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just biologically speaking, the purpose yeah. of, of gender for homo sapiens is to procreate, right? Sure. Were our spirits procreating? Is that how our spirits worked? Like, did our spirits have sperm and egg and were procreating in that way prior to this life? I'm just asking these questions. I mean, did we have to pee and poop as spirits? <laughs> you know what you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because our genitalia is used for these for these sure. different things. Yeah. So so what would be the purpose of genitalia to a spirit before they inhabit a human body? That's my question to everybody. Sure. And, and I'm just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what? <laughs> It's a basic biological necessity to pass on your gene pool and to survive for the species to survive. You know, it's, but for like spiritual cocks and stuff, I mean, what is this? I mean, like, yes. like <laughs> you know, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who is female very recently. And um, the topic of uh, within the Mormon church, you females cannot hold the priesthood, therefore cannot yeah. be in a real position of authority. Um, and they were saying, you know, they, they don't like that policy, but they don't personally want the priesthood themselves. You know, that's not yeah. something that they, they care about. Um, and I said, yeah, and I completely agree with that. It's just the point, you know, it's just, yeah. the, the point of it is that you are either given the priesthood or not given a priesthood based upon what's between your legs. That's 
the problem. Yeah. It has nothing literally. to do with. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and my, my wife was always on this. She's like, it's literally just about the flesh. What is there or what's not there? She's like, how stupid is that? I'm like, yeah, I know. But you're talking to another reasonable person here. That's <laughs> that's the difference. If that if their whole thing is either it's the it's a vagina or a penis. My whole thing is either you're insane or reasonable. Like that's I'm I'm putting that down there. Like, yeah, OK, you and I could have a reasonable conversation. We'd be reasonable. We can disagree with each other and go, OK. And, but, you know, and we can, but be we like, would yeah, hear each other's points and we other. would consider, we would consider, we would consider the evidence and we would Correct. follow through with our own study right. and, and things like that's that. That's not there. And the other yeah. part of this is, this is, this is the insane part about it is that's so stupid. Like that's, it. that's the insane part. Like a bunch of people who are doing really stupid stuff and agreeing on being stupid. And then when someone <laughs> rational comes in and goes, this actually makes no sense, get more stupid about it. Like, yeah, that's just it's so wild double, to me. Doubling down on double stupidity. Stupid. Yeah. yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, oh, you think I'm stupid? I'll show you how much more stupid I am for that. Hold my beer. <laughs> Hold my beer. I'm going to say something even crazier than what you just said. I'm just actually kind of sick of it. It's just like, I was listening to something the other day, and this guy just so worked up about transgendered people and stuff i'm like what does this matter i'm like who cares yeah. i'm like i care for the people I, i'm all about my whole motto was take care of humans that's my simple motto. let's just take care of the humans right that means all people and just to fixate on these things and i often think i'm probably wrong on this but if you're that fixated on something there's some pathology with you about that that's going on more than yeah. likely, if you're really so focused on this one piece of ideology, whatever, you're dealing with some weird thing about it. It has to be. Like, no one's that in. I mean, I could be interested in a season long of football, and whatever, and then I just forget about it. Yeah. No, 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 not here. It's a years long rager. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm a big basketball fan. I can't remember who won the last NBA finals. I had to think that just about happened the a couple day. months ago. Boston won, and my buddy was telling Boston me, I said, won. oh, yeah, who won that? I, I like but, basketball a lot. Who were they <laughs> playing against again? Were they the Mavericks? The Mavericks, the Mavericks that's right. The no, Mavericks. see, look, okay. we had to think about that. See, on the other side, there's no thinking, it's spewing, spewing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but that's the thing where it's like you recognize the importance of these things. So for me, I'm not speaking for the players or the yeah. diehard fans. I'm saying for me, somebody who just enjoys it, who who loves the yeah. sport, who appreciates ath athletes and things like yeah. that, um, don't care who wins, really. It is just, that's not, for me, that's not the point of being a, a sports fan, who wins. Right. For me, it's how they win. Yeah. That's what's important as a sports fan. So that's, for me, uh, what we're talking about as being spiritual people, Christian yeah. people, it's that, or, or whatever your religion is, it's not what religion you are. It's how you're being that religion. I think that is yeah. what Jesus is trying to say all the time. He used the Roman centurion as the, the example of the greatest faith he'd seen in all of Israel. So right. Jesus is not concerned with the, the uh, specificities of your individual belief. He's concerned with how you act yeah. with what you believe. Right. Well, that's missing completely. <laughs> just like it's like we talked about last time i like linking back to stuff it's you know so heavy on the dogma you know so somebody's yeah. like hey a little lighter on the cream cheese here you know it's like, <laughs> not there a little it's less like, schmear a little less schmear it's <laughs> like wow how much locks can i put on this it's just like you know it's like it's what it is it's like heavy on the dogma very very light like am gold light on the behavioral part actually uh aspect of it that's what just like i'm actually kind of just kind of like so exhausted of it i'm just like how am i am i the crazy one here for <laughs> like so i i've been talking about this with a, with a friend of mine very very recently as well uh, here's something <laughs> this was actually really funny this friend asked me just point blank without any um lead up to it they just asked me have you never cared what people think about you yeah. And I uh, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I respond to them. I say that's like walking up to somebody and and just point blank asking them, 
have you never cared what you look like? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like, how am I supposed to take that really? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> they meant it as a compliment. They meant sure. it as I will just speak truth to anybody. Yeah. And I don't care if that, you know, they like me. <laughs> You know, I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not in a popularity contest. That's I'm right. not, yeah. I'm not, you know, trying to, I'm not trying to make enemies either, but yeah. if somebody is, you know, so offended by truth, yeah, then, I mean, how good of a friend could they be in the first place? Right. <laughs> That's exactly. This is my whole thing. It's like, I just sit there sometimes I think about people just like, they're so obsessed about you pick the topic that is the talking cultural point, whatever, like this is their main agenda constantly. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I don't know, man, I've had a lot of education, a lot of experience. And usually this is something that is a, it is an issue for this person, not that issue, something with them. There's an issue. Yeah. And they are masquerading it as they're projecting. It's all projection. They're marketing it. I was telling my buddy over the weekend, I was like, it's all marketing. They're marketing it to you for you to come to their side, but they're really just projecting their own garbage about it and their insecurities. And, you know, maybe, maybe they really have something underneath they feel ashamed about to talk about it. Mm. And it's okay. Yeah. Well, you know, where's a different life? You could do that. You know, I mean, and, and, like, they, and, and they might not even be ashamed of the particular topic that they're right. talking about, but there's something else in their life that they're overcompensating yeah. for with this thing that they're uber confident about. Right. I'll give you an example. And I'm and I'm not trying to make any assumptions about this speaker this past Sunday, sure. but he made a real strong point of saying, I know I'm a male. And I know I've always been a male, oh. you know, from and what yeah. I want to go walk right. up and just say this. Person. And, you know, I I tried to keep my letter really concise, but so <laughs> I, I had I to tried, be hard for you. <laughs> it was so difficult. Oh, my goodness. I gave him like four short paragraphs yeah. um, with what I thought were the four most important talking points of his talk that I should respond to. But even in responding to those talking points, I didn't respond in all the ways I, I, I wanted to if I had more time. If we were doing like a lengthy debate with each yeah. other, I would, I, would, I would love to inform this person. It's like, actually, you weren't always a male. Every yeah. single one of us started out as a female it's in true. the fetus. Yeah. Every single one. <laughs> you later transformed into a male. You are trans. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, they don't want to hear that, man. They don't want to hear that. <laughs> they do they, not. They do that. That's not, that's blasphemous to them. It's, I don't know. It's just like, like I think about this whole thing. Like it says, I am a male. I know I'm a male. I'm actually pretty divorced from that idea. I know that sounds probably crazy to a lot of people, but uh, it's just not that important. I it just, I don't know. It just You've accepted that, that the, your genitalia is not what defines you. Yeah, it's just really not that important. Like when someone says we're going to be more like a man, I always, when people tell me, I go, what does that mean? Like, yeah. I want to like, I actually really want to know, is it That's... stereotypical man? Like the Barbie movie, is this stereotypical Barbie? Is this weird Barbie? Like what version of Barbie am I supposed to be here? You know. Yeah, what, what era of what culture yeah. are we defining this man by? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Am I a 1950s man? Yeah. Am I 1830s man? Am I, I mean, I guess if you're, if I'm a man in 2024, that person would call me a soy boy or something, you know, like, yep. oh yeah, I, I eat soy. So that makes me bad. <laughs> yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> how dare you? How dare you eat? How, how that... dare you eat that bean? <laughs> <laughs> we eat pinto beans around here my friend <laughs> yes, I'll get dare that you. soy bean out of here get that soy bean out of here <laughs> you're soft you know that i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> but that is the, uh, time and time again when we talk about gender what ends up happening always is that when we start to talk about the masculine we end up talking about what the masculine cannot do yeah. in order to be masculine. Yes. That is not how we talk about women. No. And we do not talk about the feminine is like, you can't do this because you're 
you know, if I'm, some people will because they're chauvinist bastards. Yeah. But the, the point I'm talking about is when we're defining masculine and defining feminine, the feminine is never defined by what it can't do because the feminine is infinite and the masculine is so stuck in this really small box. Yeah. And it, and, and it really needs to break free. You know, but the moment people yeah. say people think you're going to break free from the masculine, they think yeah. you're going to be, you know, some some crazy lunatic just wearing rainbows. And and, yeah. and not that those people are lunatic. I, I shouldn't even yeah. say that because I'm not even trying to define anybody in the LGBTQ yeah. plus community as I'm not even trying to say they're divergent in any way. Yeah, they're all normal people to you and I. Sure. They're as normal as being straight to people right. like you and I. Right. And, and I think that is oftentimes people mistake minority for abnormal. Yeah. Does that make sense? I <laughs> you know, totally get like, it. Yeah. It's like, you're black, you're a minority. Does that make you weird? <laughs> no, no, there are <laughs> less know? of me in the population. That's, uh, yeah. that's just, that's all. That that's doesn't it. make you weird that's or strange it. or anything like that. Just, just less of me. You know, yeah. <laughs> people look if like I, me. <laughs> yeah. If I go to Brazil, I'm a minority. Right. You know, does that exactly. make me weird? No. <laughs> other things do that. Yeah, okay. I'll let that other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Just, but simply being a minority does not make me strange or weird. Yeah. And it's just wild to me. It's just, this is a wild ride we're on right now, man, because I feel like I, I'm not trying to put myself, I'm just saying, I feel very sane. Like I feel very sane. And I feel like I'm surrounded by insanity in terms of like pop culture stuff and what's, you know, in my life, my normal lived experience, I'm not around insane people. I'm not seeing it. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. but I'm also not trying to engage with a lot of nut jobs and stuff either and stuff like, but yeah. like if what I see, the projection, the marketing to me is insane. Like, it's like, this doesn't matter. Why do you care about this so much? <laughs> it's like, and that's what politics it feels like. It's always this marketing plan and religion a lot now. It's like, let's market to you the truth. Like, yeah, we know we're lying about this shit, but, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> this is the truth, though, with an F, you know. You know, that that is a real problem. And we've touched on that in the last couple episodes just about, you know, and, and I told, you know, from my growing up Mormon perspective about, you yeah. um, you know, truth claims by my own church yeah. that they've later, you know, retconned, but they haven't fully retconned because they haven't pulled it out of the, the, the main literature, but they've, they've, they've made statements, you know, yeah. uh, on essays on their website and things like that, that disagree with the fundamental founding literature of, of the faith. So we are in a strange space right now because more and more as we become more educated about all of these things and we become more tolerant and more accepting because because once you, it, it, you know, it's kind of like if I were, let's say I were racist, you know, and you and I were talking and I had yeah. no idea you were black. Yeah. And then we finally meet and I realize you're black. Well, now I, now I have to question my racism because right. here's somebody who I love and respect and their skin color just happens to be different from mine, <laughs> but you know, so, but we're in that space right now yeah. where uh, little by little, even the most intolerant are becoming more tolerant Yeah, and they don't even realize it. Right. They might think they're being corrupted. You know? Yeah, no, but, that's the word. You've yeah. been corrupted by the deep state. <laughs> Yeah. all this stuff i'm like wasn't this like i've seen stuff like this in movies like where some guy said this i'm like Are you guys just playing movies and stuff like what is this like i don't know i just like an attack on sanity in my plane in my opinion it's like the conspiracy theories out there and you know i'm not hip to every conspiracy theory but not i i would say at least 90 percent of the conspiracy theories that i get wind of are from the far right yeah. Um, but they won't say that. You know what I mean? Like there's this not there's no acknowledgement of that. Yeah. No, on that aspect, as people who observe both sides, they think people on the left are also doing that or they think it's worse. 
like they're saying all these things. It's like it's just this massive cognitive dissonance going on, you know. My my wife was having a debate with some people very recently about the moon landing. Oh god. <laughs> and they and they wanted to push wow. the conspiracy theory that it didn't happen. It was all on Hollywood set. And I was like, well, how do you explain that we've been to the moon several times and we bring back moon rocks and we yeah. do all these things? It's like, how did we bring back moon rocks yeah. if we weren't there? I don't understand. But, you know, so, so one of these people, their argument was it's not bad to push back. It's like, no, it's not bad to push no. back, but you should have a, something of substance to push back with. If you're just yeah. pushing back because you heard somebody else say, oh, that didn't happen, yeah. but they have no substantive claim for which you can get behind, then why are you ar making it your argument? Why are you standing behind it? And their argument is like, well, you just shouldn't trust the government. Like, <laughs> okay, this is, a good, this is a good segue into this. <laughs> this is very similar to um, when someone tries to end your discussion with them about the Bible. Right. They, they're the end. The end is you know what's coming. If you dig yeah. too deep and you provide actual sane points of view, the end is always, well, this is what the Bible says. It's or there's mystery. It's a mystery. Um, yeah. You know, it's like it's the same garbage stuff to just get out of it for that. Like, don't tell me that. Like, be strong with your point. Be strong. Back it up with something. Don't just tell me I'm going to, you know, do it because I said so. All right. Yeah. Good parenting. Uh, it's like, <laughs> it's so at a certain point, you build trust. And at a certain point, somebody might just take your word on it. But that is something that you build. You by, build that. Yes. By, by having a history of presenting accurate claims with evidence. Right. It's not something that you just get to get to. Oh, well, you know, yeah, <laughs> you have no reason to trust me, but trust me, trust me, <laughs> yeah. trust me, trust me. This is what God wants. This is what Jesus uh, thinks, you know, I mean, it's just like people too. try to tell me all the time. I'm telling you, I, mean, I don't like I said, I don't engage much with um, we're different. You're you're doing more of that than I am. But in the instance that does happen, someone will say. Well, life was just better under Trump. What does that mean? I say, like, tell me what was better for, like, which people, what were the policies, what actually helped people in their day? It's just it's nothing. It's almost a pointless exercise. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there weren't all these people coming across the border. It's always the same bullshit. Uh, just all these it's people like, coming actually across. Actually, they the border. were. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, and they've been doing it for a long time. I'm like. Whoever you want to say it is, it's been happening. All right. And it's like, it's the same stuff. You know, our oh, freedoms was... weren't infringed upon. Ugh. What freedom? Normally what they're talking about is that somebody else gained more freedom, as in <laughs> not, not more freedom than them, mind you, but they yeah. became close to being more equal. Yeah. And, and somebody else, a minority minority no, usually is what we're talking about whether they be a racial minority or an, or or a um, a gender or sexual yeah. minority you know what they're what the, what these people are talking about is that somebody else is getting pretty close to having yeah. as many rights as i have and that can't happen yeah i've got to stay in power i've got to stay in power well as oh life was so much better you know what this is my next line sometimes somebody says that to me my life is always better when I make better decisions. I don't depend on people in, in this place or that place to make my life better. I make my life better, and I make better decisions by that. Basically, you've leased out your life to someone else. Well, my yeah. life is only better if so-and-so is in the leadership position and taking no responsibility that maybe your life's shit because you're a piece of shit. <laughs> like that. That's too. That's too much responsibility. That's too much. Don't be subtle. Tell me what you really yeah, mean. It's true though. I'm telling you, it's like because they're not gonna. Okay, here, here's. I'm, I'm on a thing today, man. I'm. You yeah. got me going, man. Yeah. Because the thing is, you. That's just, just like you are literally leasing. You're giving away your life to other people and saying, you know what, this was this way when this person was in. The price of eggs was less and blah blah blah. 
Okay, what about them trips to Vegas you went to when you spent three, four thousand dollars? Inflation? Mm -hmm. Did you curb any of your behavior during the time? Yeah. Well, it's my right to spend money. It's your right to be broke, broke as hell too, and stop complaining about <laughs> the people. I'm <laughs> like, don't be putting that on. You know, it's your it's your life. And there's obviously people are born into different situations. As a minority, I understand that minorities have a lot and people who are just born into poverty. That's a little different. All right. There's actually yeah. a lot different for that. But listen, you didn't need to take that five thousand dollar vacation and no. during yeah. inflation and then blame it on inflation or the president. Meanwhile, did you have to buy a new car during this time? No. You could have cut back. Oh, here's another one. You could have gone out to eat at a restaurant, and maybe you and your significant other could just split a large-ass entree that they give you instead of getting separate ones. Can I keep going? I mean, yeah. like, no, but life was better because yeah. it's, it's too hard for me to have self-reflection about the garbage I did to cause my life to not be well. No one wants to do that. In reflecting upon these kinds of things, my wife and I were talking about this. And in the past couple of years, we're making more money and we're living more comfortably than we ever have in our entire marriage. We've been yeah. we've been married. We just celebrated 24 years, you know. So we've yeah. been married, uh, been married a long time, but yeah. <clears throat> we are no happier than we were when we were destitute. Yeah. You know, no happier at all when we were on. When we were uh, students on food stamps, yeah. you know, we no happier today than we were then. In fact, this past year, my wife and I agree, has been one of the most difficult emotional years of our marriage. And it has nothing to do with like our marriage is falling apart or anything like that. Yeah. It would just shit happens. Pe you know, people change and progress. And we had some growing pains this year. And, yeah. you know, we still love each other very much, of course, and we're, we're, we're just great and we're doing fine, yeah. but, but you just go through these times, you know, and you don't blame, you know, we didn't go through a tough time because of the Biden administration. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's what it is, right? That's yeah. the whole talking point. My you know? life sucks because of the Biden administration or Clinton yeah. or Bush. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> really, was George W. right next to you when you bought that fucking fur coat that you didn't need? Yeah. <laughs> like, <I'm> like, <laughs> I'm serious. I'm sick. Yeah. of I'm sick of lack of personal accountability. This isn't like, oh, pick yourself up bootstraps. That's garbage. When people are people are born into rough situations, some people overcome yeah. it. Some people don't. This is like stuff you literally have agency over, like just because you wanted to get a brand new couch and you didn't need it. You just did it. And then, oh, you know, inflation's really high right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, you had a choice. <laughs> you know, what we're talking about is really funny because it's it's materialism, right? Yeah. And the, the same people who are probably more than likely making these uh, talking points are all supposed to be Christian. Yeah. Anti-materialists. So... They should know that money is the root of all evil and their concern <laughs> with money uh, is is not a concern that Jesus had. No. You know, in fact, he would tell you to give everything you have away to the poor. That's right. And to become and to take that vow of uh, that Franciscan vow of uh, poverty and to follow him. That's what Jesus would respond to anybody complaining about their financial situation, you know, yeah. Have less. How about this? Yeah. Have less. Or you know what? Here's another one. I'm sorry. I'm on a rant here today, man. Do it. Like, Please. You're complaining about the price of gas. Yeah, you're driving the biggest F-250 known to man that gets like 10 miles. Of the. Is that smart? Yeah. Is that smart? <laughs> like, I guess well, you can't. I guess it's you just don't want to look stupid having a soy boy Prius or something, <laughs> you know, something, you know, or whatever. Uh, Hybrid we own car. we own three cars: a Chevy Spark and two Priuses. Yeah. And let me tell you, there is nothing that gives me gives me more joy <laughs> than to average fifty five miles to the exactly. gallon in my Prius. <laughs> while that while that douchebag that you're talking about next to me is averaging twelve. Right. 
But then they complain the price under the Biden administration gas. I'm like, again, personal accountability. Do you need that big ass truck? All right. There are plenty of other options where you can get 55 miles to the gallon or hybrid or electric. But it's, again, you just lease your decision making. My wife says it. You've leased your decision making to other people. That's what yeah. you've just you've given your own agency away by saying, well, under this administration, my life was good. Really, your life is good. You're out of shape, you're broke, and you're going to Trump rallies. Your life was better then? <laughs> it's like, like, yeah. <laughs> your life was better. How? Tell me the metrics that your life was better about. Just tell me. <laughs> like, they, they felt more at ease thinking that they were in power. Yeah. They had they had this imagination that somehow they were in power. You know what right. I mean? Like if you if your team's winning, you think yeah. you we we all have had this, you know, but some of us have grown out of it, but we've all had yeah. this where we feel like if our team is winning, whether it be a political team, sports team, religious team, whatever have yeah. you, if we're winning, then we have power and that we feel empowered. Yeah. The thing about somebody like a Donald Trump is that he's not interested in, in empowering anybody else. No. That's the that's the problem with somebody like a Donald Trump is that he's not trying to lift everybody up with him. Yeah. And I'm not trying to make an argument for the other side that they are. No. I'm just trying to say that, you know, to to make your point that if you are depending on no matter what who you're voting for, if yeah. you're depending on them to empower you forget about it forget it <laughs> like forget I'm, I'm not looking to kamala harris to empower me no no it, it, it's just you're not literally looking for the president of the united states and that person's administration to make your life worth it like this is i mean you might as well just drop your pants and just be like hey you know just <laughs> I have no agency over my life. I literally have no decision making power. Imagine the CEO of a really successful company like, you know, we just have to make these decisions based off of this nebulous thing out here in another galaxy, you know, and uh, then well, everyone will be happy and like, oh, maybe we should do something about it. <laughs> like, sick of it man <laughs> i'm like yeah i see life so clearly now man i'll just like i figured it out i just like it's it's just practical so that same person with the truck would go oh well you know that's my freedom to have that truck you're correct that is true it's still a stupid decision <laughs> like yeah, freedom isn't void of consequence that's the thing you know, uh, like w w when we say we're free to do something, that doesn't mean there, it, yeah. it's without consequence. Yeah, you're actually free to break any law you want. Yeah, I mean, but that, that yeah. those bring consequences, right? right? And 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 you're free to do things that are perfectly lawful that also have negative consequences. True. Um, so <laughs> freedom is not a get out of jail free card. No. I'm sick of this freedom discussion, man, with people. I'm just like, come on, give me a break. I'm like, like, it's you're masking your stupid decision based on freedom. Freedom's the cover. Your stupidity is the reason. I'm like, that's what it is. I'm like, yeah. No one wants to admit that, though. That this is the crux of my whole thing, Simon. Is self ref. I told this to. I think I told this to my wife. I said, self reflection is a higher order of thinking in today's society. It's a much higher level of cognitive um brain power at this point and like thinking about it reflecting and then doing something that's superhuman that's superhuman that's a marvel superhero right mm. there the baseline yeah. is not that the baseline is denial that's what the baseline is i will deny that i had anything wrong to do with the outcome of my life and his decision and I will pawn it off to someone else because it hurts too much to mm -hmm. actually confront me. It's much easier to, and you know, it's, it's the same thing. Oh, the, you know, the food administration, the stuff they put in our food. I get that. A lot of that, a lot of bad stuff. I mean, did you change your habits? <laughs> I mean, come on, at least lie to me a little, lie to me a yeah. little bit in a good way. <laughs> like, yeah. Give me something, you know, <laughs> like, Oh, there's the Mr. Rogers song. What do you what do you do with the mad that you feel? Yeah. 
and he gives some options he's like hey do you run as fast as you can go do you do you do you punch some play-doh do you yeah you know whatever but toward the end of the song he starts singing about how wonderful it is to be able to stop when you want to yeah so you can have these outlets for the mad that you feel but you're still in control of yourself so instead of punching a person you punch that play-doh yeah. instead of running somebody down you just run as fast as you can by yourself you know so anyway uh the the whole point of this is that it, it's just such a beautiful concept to, to me to just be able to say okay we all feel that was one of mr rogers biggest talking points is that who how, how you feel is who you are and yet what he communicates in this song is that higher thinking can prevail over those baser feelings and i'm not trying to use base as in uh, uh, derogative but how you feel really is the most base communication that we have yeah. Yeah. it's like oh i feel a certain way how you feel has nothing to do with the truth you can feel something that is completely inaccurate to what's actually going on right. that's right yeah. <laughs> all of us are guilty of this every one of us you know, I might be offended by something that somebody said, but I might have heard what they said completely out of context. And now my feelings are completely invalid. Yeah. This is where higher thinking comes in, what we're yeah. talking about. Okay, you feel something. Start there. Start now there. examine the feeling. Why did you feel that way? What's happening to cause these feelings to come up? Are they, is there a history in your own self that, you know, something happened that's triggering these feelings and it's actually not the thing that happened, but something that happened in the past yeah. that, you know, you're actually feeling about so on and so forth. You know, it, it's all individual and it, and it depends on the situation and the person, but it is so important for all of us to follow Mr. Rogers instructions yeah. and to stop. Okay. You're feeling, you have a safe outlet for those feelings and now you stop and you control yourself. Yeah. That's hard to do <laughs> for a lot of folks. Yeah. <laughs> it's and you know, so speaking of that higher order thinking, I wanted to. I sent you that podcast episode. Uh, yeah. it was the by I love this thing, the Bible for normal people. I, I love this podcast. That was a great Deep episode, shout, it was good. right? David yeah. Dark, I'd never heard of the guy before this. And I thought, man, this guy says a lot of interesting things, like, like you, you say a lot of interesting things. And David, I, he channels, you guys are very similar to me. And I just I love, felt that, like that when I was listening to it. Yeah. yeah, like this guy is like, this is my type of guy. You know, it's like mm -hmm. this doubt as a holy task. I, I read that and I was like, ooh, talk dirty. Yeah. <laughs> like, <it's> like, <laughs> ooh, baby. I, you know, and just how he broke it down. So, I mean, I listened to it, but I, I, I sent it to you because I figured you would like it or you would be at least interested in it because those are two different things. Yeah. And I want your reaction to it. So I loved it and I was interested in it. Okay. And um, it's something that um, I've had a lot of conversations with this concept of doubt uh, with, with people, especially people of my own faith and, and other Christian uh, believers. And I, I I won't say that I talk about it the same way that they did in the podcast. Yeah. He came at it for, from some different angles, which I really appreciate it. Yeah. But I'll give you the angle that I'm normally coming at it from. And that is um, uh, James, the Apostle James says, uh, faith without works is dead. And I would add to that and say faith without doubt is dead. Mm. Because faith is not knowledge. And that's something that they were really kind of getting at and yeah. talking to, you know, talking to the point of is that um, doubt is when you just don't know something. It's like, yeah, there's no way that I can um, prove in the court of law that God even exists. I can't do it. There's 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 no tangible claim that I can use yeah. to prove the existence of God. That does not mean you have to stop believing in God, that right. your faith is invalid. But it does mean that there's room for doubt within that faith. 
And where there's room for doubt, there's room for growth. There's room for us to expand our knowledge. So whatever you have faith in, whatever any of us has faith in, we have room to grow and change within that faith because that faith is not based on uh, inarguable claims. Right. That's 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 my my brief take on it. That is the briefest <laughs> take I've ever seen you give on anything. But if I said let's talk about the prequel Star Wars, you would lose your I mind. Would, I you just twenty five minutes to let it go. Well, I mean, I can keep going if you want. So. I called you out on that one, man. Yeah. <laughs> that was the lightest <laughs> take I've ever seen you give. <laughs> well, because I agreed with them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> when you're I mean, there's, like, there's not much to say. There's not much to say when you agree with somebody. <laughs> that's kind of true, actually. You know, I mean, <laughs> that's why I prefer conversations with people <laughs> that are, where at least we we have a different take on something because yeah. uh, otherwise, if if we're all coming from the same place and the same <laughs> knowledge base and we agree, I mean, what? There's no conversation anymore. You had nothing on that. Man. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I know that feeling when someone's wrapping up their talk and the the low the volume gets lower. Yeah. Tell they're coming in to land the plane. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Is that's all really he's got. Happening? That's all he's got to that's say. That's really happening. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, all right, l let me let me talk a little bit about faith real quick because if, if doubt is such an important component of faith, then maybe we need to talk about what is faith. And I've had a long journey with defining for myself what faith is. If you were to ask me, you know, probably when I'm a teenager, what is faith? You know, I would give you the standard answer that is like how Mormons specifically define faith. And that is kind of going along with the Apostle Paul. It's the belief in things that are unseen, but are true. How you prove something unseen is true. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Do you yeah. smell it? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it smells true to me. <laughs> but that's how I would have responded. Now, then I went on my mission in Brazil. And while on that mission, I came to what I thought was like this amazing revelation about what faith is. And I came to realize that faith is an experience. So each person's faith is based on their own personal experience with the divine. Okay, now I have to skip ahead a bunch more years and I figured and I realized that I was wrong. And I'm contemplating once again the Apostle James and his faith without works is dead. And I came to, and this is the, the version of faith that I still subscribe to today, that faith is the work and it has nothing to do with the result. So when you put your faith in some something, and let's just, we're talking about God. So I put my faith in God. That means I'm going to do, I'm going to act. I'm going to do things that demonstrate my faith because that is my faith. So anytime you pray, anytime you give service to somebody, that is the expression of faith. But here's the example I use to other Mormons, because um, the Mormon religion is founded upon the prophet Joseph Smith going out to a grove of, and, and praying and asking God which church he should join. That was his initial question. And he has this vision, God and Jesus appeared to him, and they tell him not to join any church, but to start the Mormon church, right? <laughs> um, but here's the question I ask people. If God and Jesus had never shown up that day, did that mean Joseph didn't have faith? And my answer is no, because the result has nothing to do with the process. Joseph Smith showed his faith just by going and, and kneeling and praying. That was his faith. The response is completely divorced from it. I don't know if all that made sense, but that's where I'm at sense. with faith. No, that's where I'm at with faith. It's evolving. It's evolved over time. Yeah. For you. And same with me, man. I feel like certainly the, ex like, okay, so 
maybe there's some of the listeners who are like, okay, I understand that. Maybe give me an example of something outside of religion. Like, all right, everybody says the word faith. Like I have faith and I have faith that my team is going to uh, become a better team. What does that mean? That means you have faith in the process of that team becoming better. The decisions yeah. they make, the moves, the transactions, the type of players they'll put on the team and stuff. You have faith in the organization, right? If, if you don't have any faith in your organization, that means you really think that nothing's going to happen. Like, you know. Yeah. And, and, and that faith is, is um, you know, it, it, it could be completely misplaced. I, I don't want to say misplaced. What's the word I want? In, anyway, don't, don't worry about that. But the point is that what if, your players get injured right. you have no control over these things yeah so did, should you have never had faith in the first place <laughs> you know i mean you know what i'm saying it's You're like still in it no matter what you still yeah. believe in the you know some things are out of your control obviously you know but those things that are out of your control are is what i think they were talking about in this podcast as doubt yeah and doubt doesn't mean necessarily that you you say oh i don't believe yeah it means there's room for error. Yeah. I believe such and such team is going to go win the championship. Yeah. Well, would would the Celtics have won the championship if if their three top players right. Brown and Tatum and and, and whoever? Yeah. Yeah. Porzingis. If they all went down with career-ending injuries, did do they win the title? You know, it's just you know. So you can have as much faith as you want, but there's always room for error within that faith. Yeah. It's it's great, and I think I could be reading this completely wrong. It's okay, but I think what happens our traditional ideas of doubt in relation to faith is if you have any level of doubt, you are now moving towards not believing, or the devil's got a hold of you. You know, it's all this like fear mongering. Yeah. You know, it's just it's all of a sudden you've turned to fear, and now you're on the road to not being a part of this thing. And I think what we're trying to do is like, no, why does that, e why does that have to equal that? Like for that, you know? So it does equal that only because the more zealous people who believe what you're saying yeah. just now, that, that it must equal yeah. that, they're pushing the rest of us out mm. with their zealousness, right? Yeah. So. I mean, I'm I, I'm trying not to be over dramatic about any of this because I honestly don't have like these terrible you know emotional feelings yeah. about these these types of things. Yeah. But the Mormon Church has more or less pushed me out. Yeah. You know, it's like I didn't choose to um, learn too much truth. It just happened. <laughs> <laughs> but by learning too much truth, I'm now in a position where I cannot participate in a lot of the things. Yeah. And I've been pushed out because I decided to study. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's great? And, you know, on top of that, something I think that's good to mention again uh, and I've told I've used this when you've said this, you know, during our whole thing, like when you're talking about Bible study and then when you ask questions, I'm going to say push back. You're just asking questions. Mm -hmm. And this is this is frowned upon and not just these settings in a lot of settings. You know, if you're in a business meeting and some you say things that's very counterculture mm -hmm. to the business, it's like you're this is blasphemous. It's like, well, I thought this was a study. Like when you study, you ask questions. Like I never forgot that when you said that. <laughs> that's brilliant. Like, that's the greatest answer, like thing to explain. Don't we ask questions when we study? <laughs> like, how dare you? How dare you have a brain? How dare you? How dare you be so presumptuous as to question the claims I'm making? Yes. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, you question my how. And you know what they want to tell you? How dare you question that my ego? You're trying to oh, take that, a hit at my ego right now. That is it, yeah. that is it right there. And I I think I've been extremely humbled through study because right. when you really start digging in, you 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 realize how much you don't know. Yeah. 
the less you know, the more you don't realize you don't know. <laughs> Does that make sense? You know? <laughs> And the less you know, the more you think you know. Exactly. <laughs> like, that is exactly kind of what I'm yeah. getting at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where it's just like, the less you know, the more sure you are that you're right. But the more you know, the more you're like, eh, there's mm. a lot of nuance here. And there's yeah. there's so much room for error that, you know, I mean, one of these discussions we were having, I was having with these people about the Olympic thing was just like, you know, it's just art and art borrows you know, there's an exchange always going on. The earliest depictions of Jesus were completely like based on Greek mythology. And still yeah. today we uphold a lot of these um, uh, uh, like Greek representations of yeah. Jesus. Cause you know, like, like what, what became the bearded powerful Jesus was, was kind of a representation of Jupiter. It has nothing to do with what Jesus actually yeah. looked like yeah. this tall, lean, bearded, long haired guy. Yeah. He doesn't actually look like what a Jew would look like. Yeah. Paul himself said, Hey, keep your hair short, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the Jewish style at the time was not what we depict Jesus as, you yeah. know, in our art today. And the earliest depictions of Jesus, I think we've talked about this before. He was, he was a young guy with curly locks of blonde yeah. hair no beard he had a staff to do his miracles with yeah. those were the earliest de artistic depictions of jesus that we have so if you want to go by earliest those must be the most accurate so uh, every depiction that you see of jesus with with the beard and and all these kind of things must be completely inaccurate because the earliest ones yeah. the pre the predate so anyway but my, my point with all that was just to say, we just borrow art all the time. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. influenced by something else. Sometimes you're doing an homage. Sometimes you're doing a parody. Sometimes, yeah. you know, you know, what have you. But to get all upset about it is just to show how ignorant and how little you know that's right. about art and the exchange of culture that's always happening. That people want to pretend Christianity just appeared in a vacuum and <laughs> that it was never influenced by anything else around it. And it's the most ludicrous thing I've totally. ever heard. So it's like this one culture you think never was influenced by any other culture yeah. in its entire history. Yeah. I'm sorry to be so blunt, but that's just stupid. It's just stupid. It's like no <laughs> artist as as a mu musician yourself, like, oh, well, you know, no one ever influenced me ever. Oh, gosh, Never yeah. really listened to anything that moved me. And yeah. I'm just an original. You know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, ask Hollywood. All they do is repurpose stuff from, <laughs> you know. Like, <laughs> no. I mean, what is it? Come on. Everything's a remake. Yeah, it's all, you know? exactly. And, 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 and that's a perfect analog, the, the, the the um the hollywood analog too i mean you know if you if you go down to it let's just use the pauline epistles for an example well we think at least six of were well, probably six of them are forgeries you know yeah, yeah but they're trying to copy paul and use his name in order to get their uh letter accepted as truth um, and, and that's what Hollywood does, right? I mean, we yeah, got like course. this new Twisters movie coming oh, out, you know, yeah. we got another <laughs> Alien movie coming out, yeah, you yeah. know, there, there's just always another thing. You know, my kids were asking, it's like, you going to go see the new Alien movie? It's like, I don't know. I don't, Probably I, not for me, honestly. <laughs> I'll wait till it, it gets is, is, there, is there really, are, are they really going to do anything that adds to the conversation? No, I, can, I, I don't even know that for sure, but my guess is zero, no at all from, from the preview it looks like a rehash yeah. of kind of the original alien movie yeah. and you know whether you like the the movies like prometheus and what was the one that yeah. came after alien it? covenant and uh, yeah whether you like those movies or not whether or not you think they're too problematic to enjoy because of maybe they didn't wear helmets when they you know yeah. went on to the new planet sure. or whatever yeah if you think those are you know, elements that make them too problematic, or you just didn't like the movies. At least what he was doing was trying to expand the conversation. Yeah. In a way that none of the other alien movies. Had. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Where do we come from? 
what's the create creation you know it's kind of a creation story of yeah the prometheus covenant for that how it's done you know obviously up for debate but it's you know what it, it's an expansion of an idea uh, for exactly. that you know and we just don't see that very much you know i, I told you i went and saw that deadpool wolverine oh, yeah movie. you have to tell me how that is so you know, my big complaint with it is once again, it doesn't expand the conversation. Any conversation you're having about these like multiverse movies or anything like that, or 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 if you're just a big Marvel fan, yeah. you know, or whatever, this movie did nothing to move anything forward. And if you've already watched something like Everywhere, Everything Everywhere All at Once, yeah, then you've already seen the apex of multiverse movies yeah of course it the action's better it's funnier it's more moving uh, the story's better everything about it is 100 percent superior to this deadpool wolverine movie does that make deadpool wolverine a bad movie no it doesn't i enjoyed myself it was fine it just didn't add anything yeah and so the question for me is always you know what's What's his excuse for existing? Yeah. I mean, is it just to entertain me? Is it just to make me giggle like three times in, yeah. in, in two and a half hours? <laughs> Cause that's about what hours? happened. It's, it's something like, like that. I can't geez, remember, man. but it's, it, it, it's like two, uh, two hours, two hours plus or something like Oof. that. And, you know, other people loved it. Yeah. So I'm just speaking for myself. I'm not speaking for anybody else. I, I took my son Phineas and he and his friends loved it. They thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Phineas was asking me how I'd rate it. I told him probably seven out of 10. Yeah. And at first he was offended by that. That's pretty like, high for you. I feel like, I mean, <laughs> I, I felt like it was too. I, 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 because while it, 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 it wasn't like I say, it wasn't like moving any conversation forward in any way, shape or form. It also didn't necessarily offend my intelligence like yeah. it just presented itself as this is this is a dumb movie and we're yeah. doing dumb things and we're just here to make fun of everybody yeah. including ourselves and it it played to me like like a really high budget snl skit yeah okay that's what it played to me as, yeah you know and that that might be doing it a disservice and and i don't want to do it a disservice lots of people just love this movie Mm -hmm. lots of people thought it was one of the funniest things they'd ever seen it you know it didn't it didn't hit me that way yeah and that's okay you yeah, know yeah that's, of course <laughs> yeah it's just a difference you know? of how people view things you know like, yeah if it was on and i wasn't doing anything else would i would i sit and watch it maybe yeah. you know maybe but I, I wouldn't be like, oh, what's that on? You know, I would, I yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. be offended by it. So I'm not offended by its existence, but I also can't make a good argument for it existing at all. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> there goes Simon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> but other movies, you know, they have this real reason to exist. And I felt yeah. like Marvel for a long time made movies that had specific reasons, reasons for yeah. existing. And I really feel like as they've expanded and they're doing all these different series and they're doing, and it's the same thing with these other Disney properties. Yeah. Now it's the same thing with the star Wars properties. I can't think of a single reason for any of these properties to have been made. I, I just, I honestly, I, I can't feel the same other, way, man. other than baby Yoda. That's like the only thing I can think of. <laughs> that's like, if you want to sell a bunch of plush toys that are all baby Yoda, that's like the only thing I can think of for these for, to, for these things to exist. The 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 storylines aren't very interesting, yeah. uh, if if at all interesting. Uh, I don't see a lot of growth in the characters. You know, it's just what am I here for? And it just appeals to the basics of people. You know, I mean, it's just like, yeah. And a lot of people don't want to think when like I have clients like that who like they hate movies that are like have a lot of complex aspects to them yeah more cerebral they'll tell me straight up i just want stuff to blow up during the movie like i don't want to think like me yeah. i i understand that i like that too 
but like it can't yeah. be everything for me. Honestly, it just can't be everything. Like even when I watched John Wick Four, I was like, <sighs> I mean, the whole movie is just a fight scene. I yeah. was like, and it just started feeling so ridiculous at one point when they were going up the stairs at the end, and you're just falling down. It's like mm. uh, this was literally made for the least amount of attention span possible. Was... Yeah, I enjoyed the first John Wick. I think I kind of enjoyed the second one. I, and then I was just kind of done. I was like, well, I feel like I've it's seen this. It's after that, man. Yeah, you've yeah, seen and, it. And it's like, oh, yeah. I've seen this. You know? and, I, and I'm not saying like they're bad movies. And and the effort yeah. that goes into all that fight choreography and all the things, sure, the stunts yeah. and everything, Great. it's so impressive. I'm not saying, I'm not. so I'm not here to, to bash it. I'm just saying I've lost interest in the storyline. Yeah. And yeah. without interest in the storyline, then what are we here for? <laughs> They lost what interest in the storyline too, Simon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no story. Well, and I, no, let's blow stuff up. <laughs> like, and I think that's just the the danger of trying to just make all these sequels. You know, yeah, it's just like yeah. just do a, a a different original property. You yeah. know, I mean, it's not impossible. John Wick, the first one, yeah. was not based on an, a different movie that came before it. It is possible to make an original movie with an original character and have it be very successful. It's very possible. We see it happen all the time. So I'm, I'm just befuddled why these, these big movie thing, you know, houses or whatever, they feel like they have to just rehash the same thing over and over. And, and to Marvel's credit, it feels like they're waking up to it. Yeah. I hope so. I really um, do. There's a lot of it's been trashed lately, man. I just I just stopped watching. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched any of the latest movies. I don't I don't remember series. the last one I just saw. I mean, I was like, eh. I think the last movie I actually watched was the Spider-Man one. Okay. Anyway, I don't I don't even remember how many years <laughs> that ago that was, but we're like we're so disinterested in it. We're like eh. I know. We're just, uh, I, you know. There's just so many better things out there. Yeah. And I'm and I'm just not and I'm not trying to trash the the Marvel movies. I think they've made some really great oh, stuff. Yeah. So when when Phineas was asking me to defend my position, giving it a 7 out of 10, I said, "Well, let's only pit it against other Marvel movies." Mm. And I was like, "And let's make a list of all the ones that are better." Yeah. And we started making that list, and before you know it, Phineas is like, <laughs> "Yeah, I, I guess for me it's an 8 out of 10." You know, which mm. I think he he might have been on the verge of saying like nine or ten yeah, out of ten okay. for him, but once we started actually having the discussion, yeah. so this goes to your point. Phineas was pretty zealous about Deadpool Wolverine being this great movie, but he had the ability to listen to a logical argument about why I didn't think it lived up to the yeah. quality of certain other movies. Therefore, I didn't give it. A low rating, but I'm not going to give it the highest marks either. Yeah. It's it's above mediocre, and it's below excellent. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because you went to, like, you started doing the Rolodex. You're like, all right, if I'm going to base this against other Marvel movies, all of a sudden you start thinking, okay, Captain America Civil War? Like yeah, not as good soldier. as that. Winners, you're not as good as that. You know, it's like it's, to me, those are those, those are the are the, the, Ru the Russo brothers are peak Marvel. Yeah, you know, and they're coming so. back. You know that? The next yeah, two, I heard yeah, that. I saw yeah. that. I was like, oh, they're trying to save the ship. <laughs> Same <laughs> with like, uh, <laughs> what's his name? He was Iron Man. Now oh, he's going to be the new villain, Doctor Doom, or whatever. Yeah, or whatever. yeah. I'm like, and oh. I was like, you know what? I can actually be okay with that because Iron Man was as as he was portrayed in those Marvel series yeah. of movies. He was kind of Doctor Doom with yeah. good and with with better intentions right. and with better people around him to influence him. Yeah, sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The thing about the Doctor Doom character is oftentimes he actually has really benevolent. Right. In, in the comic books, he oftentimes yeah. said, but the, the the problem with the Doctor Doom character is his ego. So he thinks he's right and he doesn't allow yeah. for the nuance that other people could be right or or more correct than, yeah. than he is. So he seeks power 
but he thinks by 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 him gaining all the power that he's going to make everything wonderful so that's kind of like the dr doom you know modus yeah. operandi there and, and it's it's his, his his motivation behind a lot of what he does in the comics i talk like i've been keeping up with comics over the last you really do, years man. i have not <laughs> i have not but from from the little i have yeah um and and from the little i know of comics pre-2000s because that's when i was into comics it was like really in the 90s that's when yeah. i was really yeah. big into them and when i say really big into them i mean i yeah. have my entire comic book collection i still have it yeah and it's a stack of comics about this high yeah. you know it's well, not really a, it's it. not a ton of <laughs> comics you know but i used to really love the characters and i yeah. would have a lot of conversations with other people who are into it think things like that and so um while while these characters don't necessarily interest me the way they did of course when i was yeah. younger i still have a lot of nostalgia for them and so i appreciate them when they're portrayed well on screen i appreciate it when i pay 15 to 20 dollars for a movie ticket and somebody has done their due diligence and really done a wonderful job of bringing a character to the screen that was one of the things i just loved about those captain america movies yeah, i felt man. like of all the characters, I really felt like they really did a great job with that Captain America guy. I mean, man, they really did, man. I mean, great, <laughs> perfect casting too. With Chris yeah. Evans, the storyline, the kind of the old school values, and then being thrust into this new world and you know, love and life and friendship. Like, oh, amazing, yeah. and good fighting and I, scenes too. I mean, like exactly, excellent action um wonderful jokes and conversations sometimes yeah. i i love i i think it's the first avengers movie where i think thor had just come into it or something yeah. anyway somebody warns captain america he's like you're out of your league man these guys are basically gods yeah and in his old timey 1940s perfect way he said there's only one god ma'am <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then he and then he leapt out to yeah. to, jo to join the fracas you know <laughs> yeah. and i just love that because you know uh the thing about a character like captain america is that you don't need to agree with him to love him that's you I don't think. need to be an american or a christian or any of those things to love him because he is his character in, in these films is exactly what america promises, promises to be exactly but breaks that promise constantly regularly and it's to represent everyone to protect and defend everyone it doesn't matter what you believe where you're from it what matters is that you're a human being and america's here to, to help that's what it's supposed to be yeah and and done and not being done very well uh, at this point it's <laughs> an hour by hour breaking of the rule yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> i try not to be cynical you know i try to say you know and and with these conversations with these um uh, particularly orthodox uh, uh christians on the, on this youtube thing that we were talking about you know i was pointing this out time after time because they want to talk about like things as being signs of the time okay 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 well starting with paul for the last two thousand years We've been talking about signs of the time. Yeah. <laughs> the time ain't come yet. So, but what I was, the point I was trying to make to these people is like, you're talking about signs of the time as if, as if it's so bad right now. And we're yeah. living in the most privileged, especially if you're an American citizen, or actually I think some of these people were from across the pond over in Great Britain, but equally for them too, no better time in the history of the world for you to live agreed this is a charmed this is a the most charmed existence for humans at this point in time like you want to go back and you know be pioneers go across all of the united states and get dysentery and die you know <laughs> like 
<laughs> have to, and heaven forbid you have. Which to I did many times growing did, up yeah. on, on yeah. Oregon Trail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. on Oregon Wait, Trail, I did. Back, I that so many times, died yeah. of dysentery. Just, no, just dysentery, terrible. basic stuff that now you would laugh at if someone like got him. Like really, I'm like, you were, those were some of the things every day. Yeah, you know, <laughs> those like, are some of the things I listed. I said, we live in an age of, uh, you know, I asked them, it's like what what time are you talking about? Cause they're like in these times we're in, I was like, are you talking about the time of high speed travel, holding a, a supercomputer in the palm of your hand with which you can video call somebody on the opposite side of the globe at the push of a button. You just video call them. I mean, that's witchcraft. That's Basically, I mean, you know how magical that feels. Yeah. And, and yeah, with all of these amazing advancements, there comes a cost. There's always a cost. And yes, so some things you can say maybe have gotten worse while other things have gotten better. But by and large, by and large, once again, this goes back to the conversation of it's not, it's not, it's, it's how you use it. It's how you use it. It's how you view it. So if you were to watch those Olympic games, and just say, oh, well, I didn't really enjoy that. Okay. Fine. Okay, exactly. Just deadpan. It'd be like, and yeah. Okay. Now let's now day? let's I mean, watch now let's watch these amazing athletes. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. but but it's your right to not like something. And and it's That's totally right. fine. And you can use your feelings and and however you want to in that regard. But then you do what Mr. Rogers told you and you stop, yeah. you count all your blessings. You think about how amazing all of these athletes are, how much they've dedicated their life to this yeah. excellence that the rest of us will never achieve in any aspect of our life. We will never be as good as these gold medalists or silver or bronze medalists, or even yeah. the person who came in last place. We will never be that good at anything in our life as they are at that one thing. And if you're not willing to celebrate that because of some performance art that lasted like a minute, <laughs> then to what you were saying earlier, you got issues. There's some, there's some serious issues, actually. I feel like this should not rule your life. There's these ideas about someone's gender, uh, it's just so flippant to me, or it's just like the argument about, I, I knew what I was going to say too. These people who are so concerned about children in America, they're so concerned about children, the family unit. My thing is, I actually don't think they're that concerned, honestly. I like, I, I, and I've been doing this podcast for a long time, 700 plus episodes. I've had people who work on freeing sex trafficking slaves. I've had those people on my podcast. No one talks about them, by the way. You know what they talk about? Stupid conspiracy theories about somebody in a basement and ping pong pizza in Washington, D.C., and they're eating children and they're trafficking them. Meanwhile, real sex trafficking is happening right underneath their nose. I don't see them partnering up with these organizations to, like, really? They care so much about children but don't want to help children actually and you know get good lunch for school better edu reforming education better health care i don't hear that what i hear is oh these stupid liberal people are eating adrenochrome and stuff or what's all made up science fiction shit. <laughs> i was like yeah. just stupid stuff you care so Jewish much space lasers space lasers i'm like you don't yeah. care about children actually i'm like he really cared about cared about children, puts forth some legislation that changes the time that school starts for kids based off of what we know mm. about the science of sleep and what changes for kids when they're in high school in terms of their chronotype yeah. and all that. You can help kids doing that. How about yeah. how about get kids who literally wait till the next week to eat because they can't eat over the weekend because they have no food. All right. That's a handout. I was like, yeah. come on. That's survival. <laughs> like... One of the points this speaker uh, this past Sunday made from the pulpit 
was he talked about government agencies and you could tell that this was a Fox news talking yeah. point, and right? Just you can just points. tell. Yeah. yeah. No real thought. And um, so he, he, he said, you know, these government welfare programs are what enable fathers to, to abandon their families. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell are you talking about? What is about? that all about? <laughs> I was like, man, you've, you've, you've mixed up the chicken and the egg. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like these welfare programs, they, they don't come into existence because a need isn't already there. Right. Nobody invents a welfare program for needs that are not already in existence. Right. They are a response to something. So if you want to talk about fathers abandoning their, their, their families, which is a perfectly legitimate conversation cool. to have, but we're talking about, okay, well, these, what's, I'm quoting the Apostle James a lot today, wow. but once again, the Apostle James, he says, he defines what true religion is, and it's the caring for the widows and orphans. Or in other words, in, 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 in a broader sense, those without husband or father. Right. So if you look at it that way, the welfare state, if that's what you want to call it, is true religion. Yeah. And not genes, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke, people. <laughs> <laughs> Put that religion on your ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Does this look good? <laughs> oh, man. So I, I asked this guy in the letter, I asked him, oh. you know, I said, um, well, I told him, I said, I guarantee that there are people in this congregation who are receiving some kind of government assistance. For sure. And I asked him, you know, did your remarks help them or did it just shame them? Mm. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's, that's what it is. It's like, we shouldn't be here to shame people, no. even when they've done wrong. That speaker, I'm not here talking about him to shame him yeah. either. I'm just saying that we have these kinds of problems you need to nip in the bud because somebody else might see them doing that and see them get away with it. And then now they're like, Oh, well, now I can talk about my politics. Sounds up on familiar. The, at the pulpit, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, my, the, the, the purpose of my, my email to him was to say, you know, it's not to say it's not to cancel him it's not to say yeah. you're you're you know i don't ever want to hear you speak again or anything like that yeah. it's to say hey next time take a more nuanced approach and keep your personal politics away from the pulpit that's all yeah quotes quote some scripture to me you know whatever don't weaponize it though yeah that's the other thing he was weaponizing a lot of things he weaponized that proclamation to the family that i was talking yeah. about he was weaponizing that he was and and you know everything that he was kind of saying he was just kind of weaponizing against sure. people and that's because he heard problem. it somewhere he heard it on a show you know yeah just verbatim you know yeah and it was very obvious that you know and i'm not saying that he was an unintelligent person or anything but i'm saying it was very obvious that he wasn't a, a well educated person yeah. in regards to these different topics that he was you know talking about and it's like well you need a better education before you stand up in front of a congregation and talk about it. That's just all there is to it. You got to do your due diligence. And if and you're not going to do your due diligence, somebody else is going to do it for you. And that's going to be very humbling and humiliating. Yeah. It's that whole thing, right? The least, the people who know the least are the most fervent about stuff. Or it's just like, if I meet someone and I was, I, for, I was, I was forget who I'm saying, saying stuff to, but I was like, oh yeah, like I meet somebody and it's like, I immediately know they're playing a character or it's mm. like overly cocky. Yeah. I immediately am very turned off by that because I don't, I don't believe it. it like it, they may, it may, other people may believe it and may get pulled into that, that tractor beam. The first thing I think is this is complete bullshit. That's the literally yeah. first thought. And I go, I just can't take this serious. Like, normally does this it's work? that alpha male, right? Yeah, I'd say alpha. So, so normally like, it's that kind of guy that you're just that. like, yeah, boy. Yeah. And what's going on? Uh, somebody's you know? compensating, you know? Right. So. And there's maybe a kinder, gentler, more humble person in there. But for some reason, that person is being pushed way down to the bottom. 
Mm-hmm. And this other person is there. It's this, it's this is their their main character energy. That's the young people say is a main character energy. And everything's <laughs> big dick energy, main character energy. It's all yeah. everybody's the center of the universe, right? It's somebody, everybody's always pushing this this uh self-congratulatory look at me energy. And and I, I find it the most abrasive with that type of energy, like overly mm-hmm. cocky. I'm the man, you know, it's like, yeah, I just like, has it's, it's like maybe the worst thing for me to be around. Honestly, I mean, people are idiots. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, you, you know, just like if you just, you know, <laughs> you're just being stupid and you're just like, Hey man, I, I, I don't understand these other things, but like, that's okay. I don't understand how to make something like, you know, people have these great woodworking skills and they may tell you, Oh, you're a real educated guy. Yeah, but who's smarter though, actually? Like mm-hmm. you can make something with your hands. I can't do anything like that. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, I respect yeah. you, but but it's just like this cockiness. I just that I can't take, you know. Like I don't mean to say they're not idiots. What I mean, idiot meaning just like if someone's just like, listen, I admit that I just don't have, there's not a lot going on here. You know, it's like Yeah. I just and they, I, and they don't they don't want there to be a lot going on. Yeah, they on. don't want it. Like that, so I that's I forgive me for that. I wasn't meaning it like that. My words weren't correct for me how I wanted to say it. That was not, We're not trying to be mean spirited yeah, here. We're no, just trying to say no. that, you know, there's I what what's happening is is usually, you know, folks like the ones you're talking about, they're getting caught up in a culture. Yeah. So it, it's not necessarily nature; it's more nurture. They've been yeah. they, they've they've nurtured this right. this idea that being vulnerable is emasculating. Yeah. Um, that being too smart or intelligent is is you know once again emasculating. I mean, that's for nerds or something. <laughs> but what happens uh. is that you know we come to find out you know and I, I'll, I'll say that. I, I did not put a lot of importance on education when I was a young person. Yeah. I did not care to become an educated individual. But something really clicked once again when I was on my mission in Brazil. And I decided I did not want to be an ignorant person anymore. And I started yeah. to become an actual student, something that I had no history of being yeah. prior to 20 years old. I was not a student in any way, shape, or form. Um, Maybe I was a student of the game of basketball. Boy, I knew the game of basketball inside and out. But other than that, I didn't care to be a a, a scholar in any way. But yeah, something flipped, man. Something snapped in my head, and I just decided I was not going to be that guy anymore. And I took it upon myself, and it had nothing to do with um, the Bush administration in the uh, 2000s. That, that that brought me to become a scholar. I did not depend on the president of the United States <laughs> to improve my life. I see how you brought that back. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, I, at first, I didn't even depend on school uh, yeah. or me even even attending school. When I first got back from my mission, I one of the first things I did was go to the bookstore and I just started buying books and reading books. I just became somebody who just I was going to I was going to be well read. And I, and I just took it upon myself. And when I first got married, I actually didn't go to school for the first year or two. And my wife was going, was finishing school and uh, she was an English major. So I would just, I would, I would just read all of the books she was reading at school, everything. That's how I first read the classics like Catcher in the Rye, because she was reading them in school and, and I'm, I'm, and, and man, things just opened up for me. Yeah. Things just opened up and, and it, but the, the reason I'm bringing up this example is that the reason things opened up for me is because it was self-imposed. I decided what I was going to become. That's right. And that's exactly right. And this, I think that's just kind of like this leasing your intelligence to other people or just giving it away outright to other things. It's a dangerous slope. Because at some point, more than likely, someone's going to confront you about these things you've given away. And then you're going to say, well, it's just because whatever said so. 
you know, yeah. or they just shut, shut you down. It's just like, I just don't like that. I'm just like, you're robbing yourself of actual substantial information, intelligence, you know, it's like, I'm never afraid to go to a place and talk to someone about anything. I always tell people, you can talk to me about anything, literally. Yes. I will absolutely. not get worked up about it. You know, I got a little worked up today, guy. All right, I got a little worked up today. I, I'm a human <laughs> being. But in general, I'm not going to get worked up about it. I'm going to chat with you about it. Even if you tell me something that's really cringy to me, I will not beat you up about it. I'll just ask you questions about it, you know, like. Well, and you know that you can get worked up in a conversation with me because yeah, yeah. we're safe. Yeah, you would not talk this way to the person no. who is who is maybe the the person you were describing earlier. Yeah, that's not how you would. I just don't want to be like nasty to people. You know, like, exactly. Not that I was being super nasty. I'm just pointing out factual information. You know, I'm like yeah, but got, we, my we, voice got up. <laughs> and we're more careful with our words when yeah. when it's when we're not sure if it's a yeah. safe environment to be yeah. able to express freely. And sometimes just, you know, so, sometimes uh, we're just communicating in a shorthand, you know, yeah. we're, we're saying, Oh, that person's an idiot. I don't actually mean they're an idiot. Right. Yeah, I just mean on, on this particular topic in this specific way, the, the way they're acting is idiotic. Yeah. But I'm not yeah. trying to define them by this thing. No. And it's the same thing with this guy who gave this talk this past Sunday. I do not want to define this person by the terrible talk they gave. I do not want to sit here and say, that's all there is to this person. Right. It's, it's, it's just not true. Yeah. It's just not true. This was a, a moment where they got lost in their own head and made a big blunder. And who, who of us has not got lost in our own heads yeah. and made a big blunder spoke something we, we shouldn't have said, acted in a way we shouldn't have acted. I'm not going to define, I hope people won't define me by my worst moment. And I hope yeah, of course. not define anybody else by theirs. Yeah, to totally, man. It's just um, that safety thing was interesting to me. It's like, you know, if you can be a safe space for other people, they'll tell you anything. They'll, I yes. mean, they'll literally tell you anything. That's literally my job. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. dream, people tell me all types of stuff once they feel comfortable i'm a safe space for them the problem is that now we're at an inflection point in society where i can tell you si simon let you know it's important to be a safe space to someone if you tell the wrong person that or a person that that's not into that idea all of a sudden i know i'm going to say this is getting all of a sudden they're thinking this is a weak person this is a woke person because they want a safe space, you know, like they start yeah. belittling like these ideas. And my pushback is always like, so let me get this right. It's bad for me to make people feel comfortable to tell me things that they struggle to tell other people. That's what you're telling me. Like, it's like when you rationally, yeah. when you rationally play this yeah. out, it makes no sense. Like, it's like, okay. I mean, and, you know, if you didn't think God or Jesus were a safe space, would you ever pray? Right. <laughs> would you even want to go to heaven? Right. <laughs> you know, it's like... I think about that all the time with like the relationship with my own children. So my daughter Rainbow had a, a, a friend stay the night last night at around 1030, 1130, somewhere in that range. From their bedroom, I, uh, Rainbow, I'm in the dining room i'm just working on some stuff and um i hear rainbow just call hey say, she's like she calls me paul yeah <laughs> says hey paul <laughs> i'm like what she's like we're in here creating drama and i was like what are you talking about she's like come in and we'll tell you anyway i come in there and they just want to like share with me and laugh with me about this whole group snapchat they've yeah. been doing with their friends and I, I actually participate in it and I do it just like a funny little video thing where yeah. um, I, I, I tell them that it was me chatting with them the whole time, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> just playing a little yeah. prank, you know. Um, but anyway, the I'm just so elated that my teenage daughter and her friend want me to come hang out with them and you know participate in this yeah. you know ridiculous snapchatting and things like that 
But that happens because I've built a relationship of trust with them. They know that I'm a safe space. They know that they can just giggle and laugh and, yeah. and do whatever and, and, and so on and so forth. And that might sound really small, but it's the goal of every parent to have yeah. this relationship with their children, that their children actually say, hey, come and hang out with me and my right. friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I couldn't ask for a more a, a, a better compliment than that from my children. They could praise me up and down all day. And, 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 and I, you know, nothing would, would say anything better than just inviting me to spend time with them. Yeah. So if that's not being a real man, then I don't want to be a real man. You don't man. want to do it then. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, w- I want nothing to do with that kind of t- the masculinity where I'm not a safe space at all times for my children and they are not excited for me to be around and to participate yeah. with them and their friends. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I totally agree, Simon. You know what, man, <laughs> you always say great things. Although you did not say much again. On I did let you down. Piece. I did let you down. Well, let me bring it back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was blown away by the lack of dialogue on that. <laughs> I, like, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, like when I agree with Simon something, take. what can I, what can I, what can I say? What can I say? I'm thinking this is a very profound topic. This is some, you're like, yeah, yeah, I got, yeah, I got, I got, uh, I, got a, you know, I got to up my game. I got to up my game. Things here, been because... in my repertoire for a while. I just, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Not new for me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I guess it's because you already heard the podcast that I, I, I didn't, you know. If I, I don't have it was a different, I it, thought it was it, different. It was like, really I actually good. Thought it was it really was, good. It went out and on it, a limb to me for he, traditional he, ideas he said, about. They them. said many provocative things in yeah. there that I really appreciated, and he said many provocative things about scripture and and yeah. about faith in general, and. Um, I, to to uh, a, a a much more conservative mindset than it, it could have been very inflammatory. Yeah. Um. But if if you go into it with an open mind and you actually are listening to what they're saying and you're and you're putting it in context and yeah. and you're and you really stop and think about it, then you know the things that they were saying. And, and people should just go listen to the podcast because yeah. it was a really great Amazing. episode. Um, what was that podcast called again? Bible, uh, the for, Bible normal for normal people. people. Yeah. I just, it's such a great podcast. I mean, these, just to be clear, these guys have no clue who I am or Simon, maybe they know Simon. I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. 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 It's just an excellent podcast for, for people who just want to learn about the Bible in a really different way. Not this kind of like cookie cutter way you kind of just learn about it growing up, you know, it's not the more, you know, your parents version of it that maybe you got it from, you know, it's, it's really out there. And they, so they have stuff like Pete ruins the um, old Testament on there. There's like this <laughs> thing, this guy comes, he's a big time religious scholar guy. He just breaks it down so succinctly about Genesis and Exodus and all that. And it's just in a way you've never heard before. It's, it, well, yeah, because Never most of us it. have just been, we've only listened in Sunday school. That's right. That's right. And, and I like and, to listen and, differently. That's my thing. And for, and for those of you who are worried that, you know, it's going to break your faith to listen to <laughs> scholarship, because I, I hear that all the time. I know, from yeah, for sure. From, from, from members yeah. of my own church. They're like, oh, stay away from that, you know, because that's, yeah. and it's like, well, okay, well, if, if, your faith is so fragile that it can't withstand the truth, then maybe you're in the wrong faith. That's right. That's totally, that's a great one for sure. <laughs> it's so fragile. You can't let other ideas come in at all. Yeah. Like, and, and, and even if your faith is so fragile that it can't withstand the fault, if you, if yeah. you think it's all false, whatever they're claiming. And from what I could tell, these guys are all believers. Oh Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're they're not. Sure. They're, it's not. It's not an outside group. No. Yeah, none it's of not that. deconstructionalists trying no. to t- tell everybody how how terrible Christianity is. No. The, these are guys who are just taking a nuanced approach to it and are just saying, "Hey, it's it's not as simple as you thought." 
Yeah. Most of, that's literally most of it. Even when they talk about well, who wrote John and you know pseudopigraphal authors and all these things, it's just it's just eye opening to think about it differently. My my stance always been for me is that it strengthens my faith to have different points of view about it, and then let me think about it. Now, yeah, some of the things I have decided that I'm just not into. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like that is that's part of the fear is to start dropping stuff. I'm like, yeah, some of it I drop. It doesn't mean like, actually, I just think it makes it more clear. And I just, as we've said in this podcast many times, like, well, what's the basics here? You know, love God, love others as you would love yourself. Like, what's with the other stuff? I mean, like, you know. I, I, I can't remember if they were making this point on that podcast episode or if this is something that I was just thinking about recently or both. Um, but there's not a single Christian on the face of the planet who isn't believing an extremely filtered version of Christianity. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who you are. And, and I'm putting myself in there too. All of us, I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying I'm, I'm any exception to any, any of this, every single one of us, we are, we are putting our faith in an extremely filtered version of Christianity and of the Bible specifically. For sure. To, to, to try and take in the Bible as a whole is so much work. Incredible. It's so, it, it's so much work. And if you're not willing to put the work in, then really you're just cherry picking your belief. Yeah. But at, at a certain point to what you were saying, even when you become really more educated and more familiar with everything that's in the Bible and, and, and Christianity in general, now you start cherry picking, but you do so in an educated way. That's right. You, you say, well, Paul said this, but Isaiah said this, and then Amos said this. So now you're just like, you're comparing, you're contrasting, and you're yeah. deciding what actually makes sense in according to what those guys said, and now what Jesus said in Matthew or Mark or whatever. So the key here is that we're not cherry picking because um, that's what somebody told us when we were kids, and that's yeah. what we want to believe. We're cherry picking now because this is what makes sense according to the world we're in, and according to our best understanding of who we think Jesus was or is and wh what we think he was actually trying to teach, et cetera, et cetera. You know? right. But that education is the, is, is the, is the big difference. It's That's the huge right. difference in, in our ability difference. to cherry pick in a responsible way versus an irresponsible way. Responsible way and understanding the cultural, historical significance and whether that lines up or not with different stories within the Bible for that. Mm -hmm. And what was yeah. happening at this time? And does that actually make sense based off the time that that was in, the cultural historical significance, the archaeological evidence, and what's being said in there? That doesn't seem unreasonable to think about. It. Let's see. Again, reasonableness is just, that's a large thing. That's a big thing for me in life. Just be reasonable. Like, yeah. that's why I don't vibe with extremism. It's never reasonable. It's always irrational. No. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is because it's always, um, it's, it's doing that cherry picking. Yeah. But it's placing undue importance on the thing that's been cherry picked. What yeah. you, I think we're talking about is that you're, you're, you're not giving undue importance to something, but you're saying maybe this other thing isn't as important yeah. anymore because maybe it was important in, you know, 750 yeah. AD yeah. or, or BC is what I meant to say. Sorry. Right. But maybe things that were important in 750 BC are not as important today, or maybe they have nothing to do with us today. You know, they're just, that's a lot of the Bible. It just has nothing so to do true. with us today. Yeah. It literally has nothing to do. And I think that, that, that bothers uh, different people who are holding on so tightly. It's like, well, because you know, there's a fear of losing something that defines your whole 
existence completely, utterly, yeah. completely. Everything you do is wrapped around the behavioral system of an idea or the dogma completely. And so people fear losing that because they don't know, well, what do I stand on then at that point? Well, I guess we'll just see. <laughs> you know, it's just like, you know, Jesus said to obey the law of Moses until all was fulfilled. Yeah. People have been arguing over that interpretation for yeah. ever since, you know, but to my mind, okay, well, he hasn't come again. So all's not fulfilled. Yeah. All the prophecies that have been spoken in the Bible have not yet been fulfilled yet. So all is not fulfilled. Yeah. Therefore, there's about 603 or so laws in the, <laughs> in the uh, uh, you know, in the law of Moses that most of us, you know, and I, and I, and I, and I did that math because that we, we have the famous 10 commandments. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that mo yeah, that's saying the famous yeah. ones, the famous ones. All right. Yeah. That, and then all that, that other stuff. You know, yeah. Like, that most people think they subscribe to. That's they think they. Subscribe. So let's let's just say that they're all obeying those 10. But now there's 600, 603 yeah. others. Yeah. That you're completely ignoring. Yeah. <laughs> so Pretty much. So yeah. everybody's cherry picking. Everybody's cherry picking. Yeah. And now it seems like it's just a lot of cherry picking fear. Which one of these things will create the most fear? for the people you know so that you know if you don't do this it's just like it's like a it's like a punitive faith you know it's like let me just make you feel like you're in big trouble man you know what yeah. you're in huge trouble <laughs> you don't or do else it. or else you know yeah. like <laughs> that's why it's they like they have ways of making you believe <laughs> yeah we have ways. <laughs> Dr. Jones. <laughs> I'm just not into the fear. I'm like, it's like when somebody, you know, like, that's when I hear these speeches sometimes and stuff. And it's like, America's a terrible place. It's falling apart. I'm like, my America's pretty good. I don't know what you're talking about, man. You know, yeah, like, we've had like, some new infrastructure bills and everything, you know, man. new, new uh, tech, you know, uh, um, bills and things like that. Things seem to be. Keeping things by and large, I'm not saying in every way, no, but by and large, they keep getting better, right? I was like, and this inevitability is kind of like I always liked the character Thanos in the Avengers, he was like, yeah. a, he was like a philosophical villain, that was his mm -hmm. thing. Like, he's gonna, before he crushes you, he's gonna drop some knowledge on you. He's going to yeah. tell you some, he's going to speak in some parables and stuff. He's doing riddles and all this stuff, you know, he's profound. He's like, you can run from it, hide from it. It all comes just the same. Yeah. And I love that line yeah. so much. He's like, you can, you can make this excuse, that excuse. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm like, no yeah. matter what you do, I will be here. <laughs> inevitable. Like, it's I am. Is that the word you use? I Inev am inevitable. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and whatever he had ego, looks like a lot of powerful people do. But he was just basically like, I always liked a lot of his points. He was like, you know, listen, all this stuff you guys are talking about, this side, that side, it's coming. <laughs> no matter what, you know, like. Well, that's what makes a villain, you know, uh, intriguing is yeah. when is when you can agree with them at least a little bit. 